In today's video, I want to go back to some old outfits and make them better using the style tips I've learned over the years. I'll be addressing in today's video things like outfit silhouette. Some of my past outfits felt too boxy, maybe too heavy um, in fabric. So I've tried to lighten it up a little bit in some of my more recent outfits. I'll address smaller details like shoe choices. Again, the color combinations and the pairings that I do nowadays is a little bit different to the past. Even in old outfits, there are some that are okay, but maybe feel a little bit generic. Um, so I'll be talking about subtle ways I like to add my own style into those outfits. I partnered up with Lily Silk for today's video to show you how I style autumn basics. So with these two sweaters and these navy silk trousers, I style them in a multitude of different ways to give you lots of inspiration for late summer, early autumn dressing. A lot of the outfits I'm showing and recreating are also really perfect for early autumn or even the transitional season, depending on where you are in the world. Lily Silk currently has their anniversary sale. So if something does catch your eye, I will have the link and code down below for you to check out. Let's start today with this outfit from March of 2019. So that would have been four years ago. Overall, there's nothing too offensive to me. I mean, it's a pretty classic look, but one of the main issues I have is that I don't feel like the outfit reflects my person. You no, know, an outfit should be an extension of who we are and how we want to portray ourselves. And I feel like this outfit with the structure, maybe the more angular shapes, more modern fits, I'm not quite right in expressing myself. Using a three word rule, if I was to describe this outfit, I would say it's minimal, it's modern, maybe it's quite structured. And I want to transform those words into modern, feminine, playful, which I feel like better aligns with what I want to express today. One of the changes I would make is that if I still wanted to wear a cotton trouser with a bit of shape, I would do a more delicate top. The top originally had a bit of boxiness and then also a heavier fabric. So I would contrast that and go for something more fitted and then with a lighter, more delicate looking fabric. I think this tank top look is really perfect because the trousers are wide and boxy. The tank top is really fitted and delicate and I like that mix of shape. They almost bring out each other better where I feel like the top is making the silhouette of the pants shine and then the pant is making the top feel really delicate and light and they're perfectly balancing each other out. To take it one step further, I think it's also quite common for me these days to go for a more fluid trouser rather than these cotton shapes. From the original photo, if I wanted to retain the t-shirt instead of the cotton trouser, how I would style it would definitely be with these more fluid pants. We've kept the silhouette of the t-shirt, we're only changing the fabric and drape of the pant, and that alone I think makes it feel so much more my style today. These navy trousers are made from silk, they're very light, they're very flowy, and I really rely on these pieces in my wardrobe because it then allows me to wear the boxier shapes that I clearly just keep gravitating towards. I really don't believe in style where we can only wear the things that make our body look amazing. Um, for me, I just want to wear what I want to wear, but I also want to use different styling tricks to make it more flattering um, and balanced on my shape. A big shift you can see from then to now is in color. I used to go for a more neutral palette and I feel a lot more confident these days going for more contrasting colors. And then even complementary colors on opposite sides of the wheel is something I very often use when I'm pairing color together. In general, a t-shirt and trouser combination is no longer my go-to as a whole. So what I tend to wear more often are knitwear, so sweaters, um, tucked into a trouser. And I have the same problem where pieces can feel a bit too boxy and oversized with not enough definition. So if I tuck a knitwear item, even though it's on the lighter side into a pair of cotton pants, it's really quite heavy and boxy. So instead, what I will always do for these outfits is to make sure I tuck it into flowy pants so that there is more fluidity and balance. In my old outfit, you can also see that I went for structured accessories. And I feel like accessories is one of the biggest areas that I like to use to create balance to an outfit. Instead of that boxy bag, here I've just gone for a small nylon pouch. It's much rounder, lighter in shape, less structured, and it does make a difference. Even for shoes, I've gone for this slightly rounder, more almond shaped toe instead of the square shape and more angular heel from before. And likewise, for my other accessories, I've gone for my new bag and it's got this more slouchy shape, um, more simple design, and it's much softer in comparison. The shoes are also more open here, and anytime you have a more open shoe, it always does wonders in making an otherwise boxy outfit 
look more balanced. The truth is, if your style of words are closer to minimal, modern, structured, then I feel like the before outfit is actually better. But if your style of words are a bit more feminine, you know, you like softer shapes, fluidity, then that is where you'll like my after outfits more. I want to share with you some of the Lily Seal pieces that I'm styling in today's video. So I guess we'll start with this knit that I'm wearing. This one is made from 100% cashmere, so it sits really comfortably on my skin. I don't have anything layered inside and it feels very, very comfortable because it's made from cashmere. Design-wise, I feel like cables can often look very classic, very traditional, but because it is a lighter area sweater and because it's got this looser shape, it still feels very contemporary. Another sweater from Lily Silk is this one, which is a more oversized style. It's got this beautiful ribbing on the neckline and cuff, and we've got quite a bit more volume through the body. This one is also opaque, a bit heavier compared to the light sweater I'm wearing right now. So this one is made from 70% merino wool and then 30% cashmere. My absolute favorite piece from Lily Silk right now is probably their silk trouser. So this navy trouser I styled throughout today's video and I don't need to tell you guys this is a shape I like. I think most of my trousers have this straight, slightly wider shape. And what sets this one apart is that it is wide, but it's not too wide. Compared to a lot of silk trousers I've had, especially in that silk PJ style, these are definitely heavier, a little bit more drape and weight to it. And it makes a big difference because it doesn't cling on me and it has that more draped look, which I find more flattering. I have gotten these pants shortened about seven to eight centimeters or three inches, so they fit more ankle length. I also style this black silk blouse and I feel like this is the perfect piece for work. It's a high neck, so it's conservative, but it's very flattering. There's something about this simple crisscross that I just think is so incredibly elegant. We've got two contrasting textures for silk. So the sleeves are a little bit sheerer and then the top is a bit more opaque. I love that because if everything was in this opaque fabric, it would feel quite heavy because also in black, but the sheerness, I think makes all the difference. The final two pieces from Lily Silk that I'm styling are these two tank tops. I've got one in cream, one in black. They're just really wonderful kind of v-neck lace tank tops made from silk. I like that they're delicate, they're light, they're versatile, and I also like the thick straps so I don't have to worry too much about what bra or underwear I'm wearing inside. They cover up a lot more than a cami, so I don't have to fuss nearly as much. The graphic t-shirt look was actually one of my favorite looks for a long time. What I want to talk about is actually a change in style habit. So the first one is just paying a lot more attention to what shoes I pair with an outfit. And then the second thing is that if I have to go for a walking shoe, I often start with the shoe and then work backwards. So this is what I do on those casual days where it's definitely a sneaker or a chunky sandal or a, you know, a boot kind of day. Let's start with the graphic tee look. I've kind of gone for a tonal look and I've gone for a black chunkier sandal. So first thing that comes to mind immediately is that if I was to wear this outfit today, there's a good chance there will be more darker elements in the look. My hair is obviously back to natural, darker than it was. And then even with trousers, I think I would go for a darker trouser over light all the way throughout. The reason for this is that I really like matching my shoe and trouser together. I think it just creates an elongation of the leg, which I quite like. I also feel like because we've gone tonal in this outfit in light colors, the black is really quite contrasting and heavy right at the bottom. The other reason for reaching for darker colors is just because I find them more flattering. I feel like a lot of my best colors are medium to deep shades. So navies, um, just deeper blues, deeper greens, deeper colors, tend to be a bit more flattering compared to light and pastel shades. So over here, I've gone for a sneaker for practicality and working backwards, I've gone for a pan that is in a similar color and then I've contrasted my top to the pan. And this is a pretty typical way of how I'll put together a look. And going back to what I said before, compared to if the shoe was contrasting, I like it a lot more when the shoe and pant matches. For the original inspo, I said the black shoes felt a bit heavy. So if I wanted to do a lot of walking, I wanted a comfortable shoe, maybe I'll just go for white sneakers instead. Now we've gone truly tonal and I think it's a lot more harmonious. For more color contrast, since we've got the graphic print on the top, there is still contrast and I've just added in a brighter pop of red to finish off the look. Let's just give an example where it's a more dressed up day and I don't want to wear a sneaker. So in this case, I don't have a white shoe that I think goes really well with this outfit to create that continuation. So even if I go for a red here, it's a little bit less heavy visually compared to the black. And I think this is an improvement 
compared to the sandal. Obviously, it's also a daintier shape, it's got a bit of a heel, and it all brings a bit of lightness to the shoe. I have an entire video talking about how I like to match shoes with different outfits, so I'll try to link that one down below for you to check out if you'd like to learn more here. These next two outfits are surprisingly recent considering how much I don't like them, but I'm wearing my Cezanne striped knit with different skirts. All four clothing pieces I'm showing here, the two sweaters and two skirts, I adore. So it's really not about the pieces, but rather how I've paired them in these outfits. The issue here is that I really like shape, I really like structure. When you're combining two pieces that have shape and structure, I think it's not doing any of them justice. And it's certainly not doing me as someone short um, any justice either. The most dramatic change I can make here to really get my point across is to go back to the tank top. With this khaki skirt, because it's got shape, it's structured, if I pair it with a tank top, I think it really brings out the structure and shape of the skirt. It's able to shine because we don't have the top that's competing with it, like we did in the previous photo. And the same thing with the linen skirt. If I paired it with a silky cami that was lighter, more delicate, then the shape of the skirt really shows through and we don't have as much competition for the top and the skirt. These are two really lovely outfits I would totally wear because they feel very harmonious and balanced. But the problem is, okay, the problem is that I'm not always in a tank top. Usually, I'm not. So let's go back to some sweater combinations and see what we can do. With the white sweater and khaki skirt combination, instead of reaching for this really heavy khaki skirt, I'm instead going to go for a lighter, silkier option. So these two skirts are quite similar in shape but the sage one is much more fluid. I went for black loafers in my original look, and you know, I gotta say in my defense, this was not a fashion day. I was running errands, I haven't turned my camera, so I like shot this photo, but the black loafers are not ideal. So instead I'll go for these Mary Janes. They have a low heel, they are very walkable, they're more rounded, more open on the top of the shoe, and definitely makes it feel lighter. If I even wanted to go one step further, I'll bring out the bias skirts. This outfit is the reason I wear so many bias skirts. They are really fitted, drapey, and they perfectly balance those boxy top silhouettes. In my outfit with the tank top and the khaki skirt, I'm playing around with proportions by having one piece be really fitted and one piece be looser. And then on those days that I'm really casual and I want to wear loose pieces, that's when I'll play with fabric over shape. So I'm wearing a really loose oversized sweater and instead of pairing it with a structured cotton pant, I've paired it with these navy silk pants. And even just changing up the texture can just go a long way in keeping the loose shapes but making them feel proportionally more flattering. There's also a smaller bag, open shoes, these all help. It might be really subtle for my content, but this year I've been getting into kibby typing and understanding more about what makes a flattering outfit on me. I'm still definitely figuring things out, so I don't want to talk too much, but one of my experiments was that I wanted to wear something that I thought was in my ideal fit. Here we've got a drapey top, we've got a bias skirt, very fitted shapes that cinches in at the waist. We've discovered silhouettes but I feel like I've also completely lost my personal style in this outfit and there's none of that that's really translating. To make this outfit better, let's just choose one thing to work on. So if I change the top to a black top, I feel like we have more colour contrast and that feels more true to my style. It's one simple thing we're doing and that already just makes us feel more like an outfit I'll wear. Another way to go about it is to add texture. So instead of going for two fluid shapes, I'm gonna go for knitwear on top and then the skirt. This original outfit almost has too many elegant pieces and I want to dress it down so there's more of a playful balance. For my top, I'm just gonna go for this rib cami. Um, I keep reaching for this because it's simple, but you can definitely change this out for like a rib tee with like a cap sleeve or like a long sleeve but anything fitted, cotton, more casual. This feels a little bit more playful and fun, and I do feel more myself compared to the original inspo. I would even do a leather jacket because I think it's a nice playful element uh, to contrast the more feminine fitted shapes. Another way I'll go to make this outfit better is to go for more voluminous on the top. So go for a sweater that has more shape, and we're gonna contrast that with the more fitted skirt. I really like to use color in my outfits, so I've gone for a playful pop of warm red and I love this because I think it just breaks up the more traditional elegant look from before. The focus here is not that you should add a pop of colour to your outfit but understanding how to transform it. I felt the previous outfit was too elegant and pop of colour is a great way to break that elegance up 
into something more playful. If an outfit felt too playful, you can definitely use more neutral tones or deeper, richer tones to bring in some elegance and make it feel less playful, more put together. And we're really just playing around with shape and color and styling to create different feelings. This is almost completely a different outfit, but if I wanted to go for an elegant top, I'll do a cotton trouser like this one. This one has a wide leg shape that flares a little bit right at the bottom. Um, it's cotton fabric, so more casual, and I love the way these two look together. This is the final outfit I'm covering today, and I am wearing this matching set from Cezanne. I adore these two pieces. These are some of my favorite pieces I feel like I've purchased from Cezanne. What I don't like in this original look is how matchy-matchy it is. And it's not really a vibe I resonate with. Um, I don't think I resonated with it then, and I don't resonate with it now. So the simple fix is that we don't wear as a set, and then we should be good. But I also want to say that there is something about this look that feels slightly unfinished to me. I can't remember what I wore for the shoes. From what I can see, I've only got two main colors in this outfit. There's light yellow and there's navy. And what I feel like it needs is that third color to tie everything together. The three color rule is not something that I, you know, force myself to follow. But whenever I look in the mirror and something feels missing, oftentimes it's because I don't have that third color. Let's start off the top first because I find myself wearing this piece a little bit more than the blazer. I feel like it will be really cute styled this way with the white trousers and burgundy shoes. In this outfit, we've got three main colors. We've got the yellow, gray, and burgundy. And I think that it just feels really finished. Even in this outfit, I'm pairing it with a very classic timeless trouser. But the wider shape makes it feel more contemporary. And I've also gone for a slightly chunkier sandal. For something brighter, more colorful, Colorful. I've gone for these warmer, earthier tones. So the yellow, the orangey red, the sage uh, for a colorful take on this outfit. With the blazer, I'm focusing on just wearing it in a way that is more casual, more effortless, rather than too put together and elegant. And here it's very basic. I've gone to the blazer and jean combination that I most often wear with blazers, to be honest. So whether that is with a ribbed tank top on the inside or a silky one, these are just my go-to blazer looks. And it's because I don't like blazers who look too heavy or dressed up. I like them to be a bit more casual and effortless in feel. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on how to make your outfits better, some things to consider, some things to try in your wardrobe. Thank you to Lily Silk for working with me in this one. I will have my code and the anniversary sale information down below if you'd like to check out any of their silk or cashmere pieces um, I've worn in today's video. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more of these analytical videos where I break things down to show how certain pieces can create different vibes or whether you prefer to see more reviews and outfit inspiration. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye.